It's all about peace, spreading love in the world. So I gotta represent rebels for joy, positivity. You know that we're all about it. Magic happens when you align your purpose, passion, and power. Just believe in your greatness. I know for sure the light that you radiate too strong to ignore. Emotional revolution, it's time that we start. Love, we need more. We are rebels for joy. Woo! Welcome back, Rebel Girl. How are you? Welcome to the Rebels for Joy podcast. This is Jillian, and I am here with the beautiful Bonnie Kelly. And we are here to gift you this conversation um, from a place of purpose, passion, and power, all fueled by joy. This is what we do. This is what this is what this movement is all about. And we are just so excited because Bonnie, you I love when like one of us gets a download and we're like, hey, like, let's do this. And the other is like, done. Like that just sounds great. And so we're going to be going into a beautiful download that you had for this episode later today, but how are you today? Hi, actually I am, I'm feeling really good. You know, like today, uh, if you're listening to this, so this is actually, you know, much later in the podcast, but today is actually the official launch of the podcast. And so our hearts are just been overwhelmed with the support of our listeners who have subscribed and rated and reviewing uh, and sharing this, you know, out there to the world and helping this movement become, you know, so much bigger than all of us. And and we've had a lot of feedback so far um, of how this has helped people, how um, so many of you feel heard, how you feel that we're giving words to what it is that um, you feel. And, you know, we're just so honored. We're very humbled today to be here. Truly. I mean, you and I both said like our text messages have been blowing up and we've been asking, right? And so, and we're going to continue doing this by the time you're listening to this. I don't know. It's April maybe, (laughs) but every single subscribe to the podcast, every single five-star rating, every single review matters, not just to make us pretty and popular in iTunes, but to the overall mission of what Rebels for Joy is. And this is helping women to rise into their purpose, passion, and power, helping to redefine sisterhood and womanhood and motherhood. We're just taking this to a whole new level. And it really is helped when the momentum is is geared up by way of your subscriptions. You're sharing it with friends and downloads. So thank you in advance. Um, and I actually have a feeling that this will be a very highly commented on episode yeah. Yeah. because we're going to get into the heart of what's going on for a lot of us. And yeah. We're going to help you move through a lot of stuff today. So, yeah. um, but first, Bonnie, you had a joke that you were going to share. I totally have a joke. And what's funny <laughs> is so we have a we have a list of these amazing ones. And Jillian's like, oh, we need to get a joke. And I said, girl, I've already got this one. This one has been on like my go-to for kids for years, right? So and it's, it's so good. All right. You ready? Mm-hmm. What is the pirate's favorite letter? R. You think it's the R, but it's really the C. <laughs> Oh, that's a really good one, BK. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I was like, yes, I got it. Oh, man. And you like the little pirate voice that went along. Yeah, I mean, that was really Cute I have a lot of I have a lot of practice with this joke. <laughs> Apparently. Well, oh my gosh. So now we know what Bonnie does in her spare time. <laughs> and if now, I can bring a joy to a child, you know I'm going to, right? Oh, I totally. Yeah. I have got a happiness disease and it is my job <laughs> to infect as many people as I can. And you can guarantee that our youth is definitely getting infected with happiness when they're around me. It's amazing. And I'm so grateful for you. And I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. And now I am really, really grateful to open up the concept of worthiness with you um, in the way that you had presented it. So I'm just going to like turn the mic over to you and then I'll guide you based on what I really feel our listeners are wondering while you're talking here. But we, we, this, this download came yesterday. We started talking through it and you just had some amazing points. So now that I've piqued everybody's interest, BK, let's go there. Yeah. I really want you to, if you're listening to this, ask yourself, have you struggled with the question? Am I worth it? Mm -hmm. Am I worth it? Am I worth spending the money on this thing? Am I worth having these dreams? Am I worth having happiness? Am I worth having the success? Am I worth having the clients? Or do you also struggle with that imposter syndrome of who do I think I am? And I'm not enough. I can't do that. 
people are better than me. They're so much stronger or they're farther ahead. And all of the doubt and the insecurities that come in and attack our worth. Yeah. And this is where, you know, I'm sitting out right now in my she shed. And if you follow us on yep. Instagram, uh, you're going to see pictures of this beautiful masterpiece, which is my, my sanctuary. It's my office. Yes. We call it the, um, the, uh, the she the she the shed quarters, right? Shed quarters, <laughs> yeah, total shed quarters. And it was an eight by 12 tool shed that was in the back of our property when we, when we bought this home. And our interior of a house, we have a beautiful house, a beautiful neighborhood, uh, doesn't have space for two entrepreneurs on the interior with a child. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that I needed some space, but with a new baby, I needed to be close to home. Mm -hmm. And so I had this, this idea, this brilliant vision to convert this tool shed into a home office, yeah. but it was going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. In fact, the estimates were anywhere between six to $12,000 to do the convert. Yeah. Yeah. And in addition to that, that's, you still have to furnish it, right? right? Which is another few thousand dollars. And I literally put that decision off for over a year, almost two years. Yeah. And when I finally sat back and asked myself, like, why do I, why is this something that I keep avoiding? It boiled down to, I didn't feel worth it. Mm -hmm. That the money that I was going to spend on this luxury could have been used for so many more practical things. Right. I love that you just underlined the words luxury mm -hmm. and practical because ladies, pause up. If you have talked yourself out of something, even if it's something that you really want, and even if it's something that you could really use, like Bonnie, you needed an office, okay. right? Yeah. Like you yeah. actually, so there was a practical need for that, but because of the cost, yeah. you put it into a category of luxury. I did. How many times have we robbed ourselves the opportunity of what we want and what we need because it's too costly, which yeah. on the other side means you're not worth the cost of yeah. it. Yeah. And what was interesting about it is that if my husband was the one that was in need of it, I wouldn't question. Right. Wouldn't have questioned it. In right. fact, like the interior of our house, one of the rooms is dedicated for his special space. So he's got his own office and that wasn't a question. So I was the one that was working in the library uh, in the front of the house yeah. with, you know, the nanny taking care of the baby and she's screaming and she's running and she's loud and I'm not able to do my podcast recordings, my Zoom calls, like all of these things and trying to juggle all of these components because I felt selfish to spend this money. I almost felt wasteful to spend this money on something that not only I needed, but it felt like such a luxury that yeah. I couldn't wrap my head around and it's a necessity and I couldn't wrap my head around because it was on me. Yeah. Yeah. And let me just, I want to throw this in there too, because you're talking about your daughter running around and she's being loud and you can't get your work done. But also let's remember mamas out there. This is not just a necessity for you, Bonnie. It's a necessity for your daughter too, yeah. because when she sees mama yeah. sitting over there in the library, guess who she wants? She wants to be with mama. Yeah. And so when she sees you, but she can't have you, then it's like, meltdown time. It's then it induces mom guilt time. Like it's just, it, it's a whole spiral effect. So, and of course this is from my outside looking in. Yeah. And of course you couldn't wrap your head around that in the context of, but I'm just not worth it. Yeah. And the funny thing it was, that wasn't even in my peripheral, right? Like yeah. I wasn't even aware that yeah. this was a worthiness issue for me. In fact, yeah. like it was, I was being practical. I was being rational, right? Uh, at the time, you know, having a baby, taking the time off work, my business was shifting. Our partnership was starting. There was yeah. all of these dimensional shifts that were also taking place that it didn't make sense yeah. to spend the money on myself, right? Yeah. And yet what was interesting when I sat back, I'm not even joking. I wouldn't have questioned spending yeah. the money if my husband needed this or if my daughter needed this. Mm -hmm. When I questioned it. And yep. that's when, when I really kind of finally said, you know what, this is, I, I'm doing this. I'm doing this for me. And I made the investment 
I remodeled the shed, which if you haven't seen it, it's spectacular. <laughs> yeah. Go to Instagram, go find Bonnie on Instagram, make sure you follow her. And, um, it's just the most beautiful. Like you texted me pictures the other night. I'm like, I would live there. And you were like, I would too. <laughs> like, it has it a loft. So beautiful. Well, and that was the thing is that once I, I really connected the dots with this and, you know, they started the construction on it. Well, it's time to start to do the furnishing of it. And the practical side of me would have made a lot of compromises in the furnishing, yeah. right? Because yeah. that's the practical nature of myself, right? I would rather put that money into a retirement, into savings, into all of these other really smart strategic investments and in, and not really allow myself the sanctuary of beauty and bliss that I can't wait to come into every single day. Yeah. And so when I spent that and I really connected in with this, like, oh my gosh, Bonnie, your worth is on the line here. Like your yes. worth is so caught up in this, this, and like, you are worth it. You are worth it. But I decided not to skimp on the design on the interior. Yeah. And so I furnished it and it cost me a pretty penny. I'm just going to yeah. put that out there. It cost me more than I was expecting. And it's so pretty. <laughs> It's amazing. And so let me ask you this. What was the thing? Like, what was the realization for you of like, oh my gosh, I don't think I'm worth it. It has nothing to do with being practical. It has nothing to do with being responsible. I actually don't think I'm worth it. Like, did you have a moment? Was it just kind of like realized over time? Walk us through that a little bit, because I feel like every single woman listening to this is like, Oh, oh, like she's starting to kind of reframe things for herself and maybe where she has skimped on things for herself. Yeah. So what was your moment of like, oh, this has nothing to me, do with me actually like saving money. This has everything to do with me not feeling worth yeah. it. Yeah. Well, yeah. So let me give you the end result first. Like, and then I'm going to okay, answer that perfect. question because what I can say now, the aftermath of it is that I don't miss the money I spent on it. Amazing. Right. Like it's not even, it's like now that the money is spent, it didn't really affect me negatively. It didn't hurt yeah. us. It didn't, you know, put us in the hole. It didn't do anything that the practical side of me was like rationalizing, justifying. So I wanted to preference that first. Right? Yes. So yeah. the realization for me was that when I'm like thinking about my daughter and at that time she was like six months old, you guys, like she was an itty bitty. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm holding her and like, I'm singing to her. I'm making up the words because I don't actually know all the words to the song. That's like, mama's going to buy you a pizza pie, right? Like whatever that's, <laughs> I don't know. I can words. so see you doing that. <laughs> You're precious. So I make up all the words to that song, right? Then it's always like, mama's going to buy you a, like, I know the diamond rings on there. And then I'm like, no, I'm going to buy you a yacht. I'm going to buy you like a flat in Italy, like all of yeah. this cool stuff. And as I'm singing this song, rocking her, I realize it's like, and mama won't buy that shit for her. <laughs> oh my God. That, that is the best aha moment I've ever freaking heard in my life. That's amazing. There is nothing like a sweet lullaby to our little ones to knock us over the head. I'm dying laughing too. Sorry. It's like I'm every single woman listening to this is now dying <laughs> laughing. So thank you. This is genuine because I did not hear I've literally not heard that before. I'm like, so I love it. I love it so much. Cause yes, we would give the world to every single other person, but we won't buy that shit for us. Like and that was the, that was kind of the aha, right? Yeah. Is like, as I'm singing and I'm rocking, I'm like, yeah, I would totally buy you all this stuff, right? Like you want, like, I'm not even gonna buy you pizza, but I'm going to buy you the pizzeria. So you yeah. can make the money on the pizza pie, right? Like yep. that's where my <laughs> song goes. And, you know, and then it just like, it just hit me and mama would never buy this shit for her. And huh? it was like this sinking, this, it just sunk in the pit of my stomach. And I realized mm -hmm. because mama won't do that, you won't do that either. Because though Truth, sister, I would say you should, and I would champion it, monkey see, monkey do. Totally. And it was just this, I mean, I've got goosebumps. It was just like this revelation that said, hold up, Bonnie. Yeah. There, yes, there is a time and a place. You need to be reasonable and rational. So sister, if you're listening to this, I'm not saying like, if you don't have, you know, $8,000 to go send, spend on a she shed, like don't go spend $8,000 on a she shed. Right. Yeah. Uh, you want to be reasonable with yourself as well. We had the money. Yeah. 
that wasn't the thing. We had the money. Yeah. It was, it really boiled down to me feeling okay enough for me to spoil, quote unquote, mm-hmm. oh yeah, air quotes here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Spoil myself on this gift. Yeah. And I realized in that moment that it was like, no, things have got to change here. Yeah. And so the question I start asking myself now is, isn't, is it worth it? Is, am I worth it? Am I worth it? And if the answer is I would buy that for someone else without a question, then you're darn tootin'. I'm going to be buying that stuff for me. Yeah. It's so powerful. I'm going to jump ahead a couple spaces on the Candyland board for a second because now on the other side of this, like I know, I know what you mean so much. <laughs> Bonnie's cracking up at the Candyland comment. <laughs> I know what you mean so much about how like, and guess what? Like we, we didn't miss it. So first point is we often think about money as a point in time and nothing is ever, ever, ever going to change. We forget that money gets to always come in too. It may not come in in the way that you expect it. You may be sitting there worrying about it and keeping it away because you're so worried, but money, money's job my friend Liza Watona said this and I will never forget it. Money's job is meant to come and go. And so when we're thinking about what we're going to spend, I don't know about you, but I like take a snapshot of my bank account and I'm like, nothing else is ever going to come in. I can't possibly spend a penny of this. And that's just not true. So I love that so much. And then here's like the extra skip on the board here. You in that space have been able to call in so much money for your family because this is your she shed. This is your office. Not only is it the place that you go to work, but it is the place that makes you feel amazing. Like when you said earlier, it is beautiful and I look forward to being there. Energy friends, right? Like attracts like. If you love being in that space, if it lights you up, you are literally rising up the scale toward abundance, toward joy, and you're not doing anything. You're just walking into a space that you've cultivated and made your own and only abundant, joyful things can meet you on that frequency. So yes, this is where you go to work, but it's not like you're going and like dragging your head against the walls of your office because you're working. Like you just feel inspired being there. Yes. Yeah. And it's, I'm so much more creative. I've got, you know, I'm more motivated to, to really make those phone calls, to connect with the women, to show up more on the lives, because I've got a space that feels, you know, safe for me to be completely transparent and vulnerable Yes, Um, because in full transparency, I mean, I'm not, I'm that person that still feels embarrassed if I'm going to go live in a Starbucks or something, right. Where other people are watching me because I'm getting, it's not that I really care about what they think. I guess that's a lie. That's a lie. I actually worry about like, are they thinking I'm this egocentric, like total yeah. online ma- main, you know, maniac. And yeah. I don't know what they're thinking. Who, who really cares what they're thinking? But there it's like, I found myself willing to show up more because I have this sanctuary for me to come to and be fully transparent and share with you guys these intimate moments and say like, yeah, look, my worth was tested here. Yeah. Right. As your rebellion leader, we're going to guide you and teach you and coach you to stand in your worth and to own your worth. And yet, even along that journey, we even will have moments where we don't even realize that our worth is on the line. Yeah. Right. Yep. And it's, it's so imperative for us to be that transparent with you and say, girl, like we might have a lot of solutions, but we don't have all the solutions. And if there's a co- coach out there that says that, then you need to run as far yeah, and as Oh my gosh, as yeah. This is not personal development of 20 years ago anymore, friends, where like you've got the guru sitting in front of the class, reading from a textbook, training you on how to be the best version of yourself. Like this is personal development of 2020, where we are literally looking from our, to our left, to our right, holding out our hands and saying, come on take my hand girl, come with us because we're doing our version of it too. And I think this is such a potent example. And maybe you're not an entrepreneur who wants a she shed, but like, what's that thing for you that you're not allowing yourself to have because you literally do not think you're worth it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that was uh, going back to the conversation with my sister-in-law this morning, I was telling her like, Hey, this is an episode we're recording today. And she was, she was just like, Oh my gosh, like Bonnie, I actually had that same moment where, you know, she needed to have some dental work done. 
Mm-hmm. She had to have some dental work and she put it off for almost a decade yeah. because everybody else, her daughter needed braces. Her son needed something. Her husband needed things. And it just, she felt like she was taking from the family. And so it kept snowballing to the point where it was a, a huge, significant amount of money that they had to do to, to really rectify the situation. And the thing that she had said was um, it brought tears. She cried when they had to write that check. She cried yeah. because it really tugged on her worth quite a bit. And, mm-hmm. you know, I know that you listening to this, that she's not alone. I'm not alone. Jillian's mm-hmm. not alone in this is that all of us had these moments, especially as responsible, amazing, supportive, nurturing, caregiving women. Mm-hmm we have these moments where we struggle with truly justifying in our mind, taking care of ourselves. Yeah. 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 Cause that's dental work. That's, you know, and you know what, it could have been going to buy a yacht and that would have been just as fine as the dental work, but it's, it's a beautiful point that you make that we sacrifice ourselves on even the most basic and necessary levels with, in terms of bringing in support or help or health or whatever it is. And we don't have to do that anymore because if you're willing to get your dog's teeth cleaned, okay, (laughs) which I know we all would. Right. And, and I could totally relate to her on this because there was like, I had a filling that fell out and I literally just didn't do anything about it for a year because, oh, well, the dogs need their teeth cleaned. Seriously, if you're going to spend the money on the dog, you need to be willing to spend the money on yourself. Totally. Okay. And that's where I want to, you, you had, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday and I was like, that's kind of like, and just bringing it into like an even like simplified version. It's like the, those of us out there that have our Amazon cart filled with things that we've just not pushed the purchase button on, right? Like, why haven't you bought the damn things in your cart yet? Like, what's that all about? If you really don't need them, get them out of the cart. They're taking up energetic space. But if you really do need, or I dare say, want them, for heaven's sake, and we are not, we are not affiliates with Amazon in any way, shape or form for this episode, telling you to go, like, we're not going to get any money for whatever's in your car. Like, but go buy the damn things in your car. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's where, you know, I really started recognizing all the little ways that this pattern was showing up. And one of the ways, this is why that conversation came up is because they're not in my cart. They're in my save for laters. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right? So you won't even put them in the cart. You're just no. going to put them on a list somewhere. Because they're, they're in the cart, but uh-huh. then the things that we need for the house also goes in the cart. So all the things that I want goes into the safe for later. Uh-huh. So you as don't I'm have to checking. look at it. Uh-huh. So as I'm checking out, right? So as I'm checking out, it's like, okay, let's look at what's in the cart. Well, save that later. Let's save that later. Save for that for later, because those are wants, not needs. And then move it over to the need pile. You guys, like it is ridiculous because like when it comes to Christmas, to birthdays, to even just wanting to be sweet, I wouldn't question saying, yeah, buy it, buy it, buy it for The number of times I hit that button in my Amazon app, especially around Christmas time, like we had a box showing up every day for crying out loud because it was a gift for somebody else that I was like, oh, two o'clock in the morning, just thought of that, buy, you know, like, but is any of that for me? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So again, like we want to promote financial responsibility. I want to make sure to put that as a baseline here. You guys, like, we're not saying like, if you don't have the money, go out and spend the stuff because you're worth it and rationalize because you're worth it. Because there are people that kind of like champion that mindset as well. And we, we are huge believers of living within your means. Yes. And to also take yourself into consideration. Yes. For once. Yes. That's it. That's it right there. Bonnie, what is your final wrap up? Go get them girl, like pep talk or to do for them. Like what takeaway would you give to our girls? Like that was a beautiful one. Like consider yourself, right? But what's something that like we could encourage them to do maybe if it feels really good, if it, if it is within their means, if it's literally because they don't think they're worth it Mm -hmm. and that's the only reason what's something that they could do today. Yeah. I would say first off, take inventory. Okay. If you need to use the great example of your Amazon, either wish list, your Amazon save for laters or your Amazon cart is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Uh, Take inventory of all the things that you say you want, the things that you say you're going to do. Okay. Even if it's like joining that yoga studio, 
Mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, we talked to a mom just recently who, you know, she just had avoided and felt so much mom guilt for just going to take a gym class and avoided mm -hmm. it for years because she felt like she was taken away from her children. Girl, sister, I get that. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, decided to shred it last year in the shredder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't even want to wear that shirt. That's a horrible shirt. <laughs> but what I would say is take inventory to really see where you're denying yourself. Yes. And then just simply ask yourself, if this was for someone else, would I question it this much? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then hit the button. Hit the button. Hit the button button. <laughs> and, you know, and practice hitting that button more regularly right? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Bonnie, thank you for sharing. Ladies, thank you for being here. And thank you for sharing this with a soul sister that you know needs to hear this conversation today. Um, this was, it was perfect. This is probably one of my favorite conversations we've had to date. And I'm just so thrilled because we get to have these real intimate conversations to help our ladies, you listening to break the mold, to take off the mask and yeah. to step into her brilliance. And yeah. She's worth it. You're worth yeah. it, girl. You are. And if there's one thing you really feel that you're worth and you're ready to start doing some of the inner work, you guys, the Rebels Dream D Bigger event in California, Sacramento, California is going live. We're May 29th and 30th of 2020. So depending on when you're listening to this, we're going to be in your presence, you know, yeah. with some other amazing, powerful speakers who are going to come in and help us remove those masks and to dream bigger. So if this is one of those areas where you kind of like are like, oh, I'd really want, but can't justify, maybe this could be that one thing for you that you invest in and join us and come get a grizzly bear hug from one of us because trust me, we love hugs. Yeah. Yeah, we do. And that it's what, what an incredible gift, maybe first gift you've given to yourself in a long time. So I'm just going to end this with saying, we'll see you in California. Yay. See you then. Bye.